that guy behind me was honking and said, hey, let him in. Yeah, probably. You'd like to think that. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I, that's like what, that. I think that's what was actually happening right there. <laughs> People, we're all trying to help each other, I think, on the roads out here. Currently on our way downtown Los Angeles to meet up with Joanna McFarlane. She is one of three female co-founders in Hopskip Drive. And Hopskip Drive's vision and what they're implementing is ride service for kids uh, to help families take the stress out of their busy schedules. They're disrupting an industry, but at the same time they're partnering with some of the incumbents in the industry. And I think that's really unique. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Jeff. Good to see you. Good to see you. This is the Reef Building. Okay. It's a lot of showrooms and then a couple floors of creative office space. And it's great because it's so conveniently located that we can recruit from all over the city. Which is very helpful. Yes. <laughs> so this is our growth team. This is sales and marketing. And over there is our community experience team, which is customer support and also our safe rides team. So that is the team that monitors every ride live in real time and our kitchen replete with donuts as every startup should be. Exactly. Well, since it's Hopskip Drive, I thought it would make the most sense for us to go for a drive and talk, Absolutely. so let's go do that. Let's do it. <laughs> Tell me, like, how did the idea of Hopskip Drive come together? Where did it, where did it originate? Yeah, so it really came together about four years ago at a birthday party. Um, all the moms were standing around talking uh, about the latest you know, kid problem of the week as moms do at birthday parties, and everybody had a transportation challenge. You know, There was the mom who got a new job on the west side and was really freaked out about how she was gonna get her kids home from school. There was the mom who had two kids that you know, had dance and soccer at the same time, and she was trying to figure that out. I was feeling very guilty telling my son that he couldn't do karate because I had no way of getting him there on Tuesday at three o'clock. And, you know, as a joke, I said, you know, we should all just put money in a hat and buy a van and hire the stay-at-home moms in the neighborhood to drive our kids around. <laughs> and everyone, you know, kind of laughed that off and my co-founder looked at me and said, yes, how do we do that? Um, and that's where it started. I mean, it was really, you know, the three of us that started the business, have, we have eight kids between us. They go to five different schools. They're in about 20 different after-school activities. And we were really struggling with this. And uh, we started meeting at Janelle's house on Sunday mornings. And our kids would play in the other room. And we you know, mapped this out at her dining room table, um, which was, I guess, our version of the garage. Yep, yep. Um, and, and from the very beginning, it was all about, OK, what would it take for me to put my kids in these cars? And yep. so how do we design something that we feel is safe enough for our kids because our kids use Hopskip Drive all the time. Yeah. Um, and that really is the underlying foundation of everything that we do. Uh, you know, is this safe enough? Is this good enough for our kids? Who are some of the first early investors in the in the business? Um, my sister? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, you, know, that, you know, I think it, nobody wanted to fund this at the very beginning. I think people thought we were absolutely crazy. Um, you know, you spend your whole, every parent tells their kids not to talk to strangers. And, and yeah. here we were saying, you know, get in a car with not a stranger, but somebody you've never met. Yep. Um, so we, you know, I think we, I, I think I went on a couple of, of really bad pitch meetings uh, looking back with a really bad deck. And um, and we got told no a lot, 
And so we just raised a friends and family round and, you know, we didn't raise nearly, we knew that it was not nearly enough, yeah. um, but we just got started anyway and, and kept going because I think one of the, the other milestones that we needed to prove was that parents would do this and that there was demand for this. And so we just needed to get started. Um, and this is a very, you know, everyone talks about, you know, lean startup, break things, move fast, um, which is all fine and good. And we do a lot of testing, but you know, we're driving kids. And so mm -hmm. you can't just throw something janky out there and see how it's working. Um, Not an environment to fail fast. No. Or fail. No. Right. <laughs> right? So things have, I mean, yeah. the system had to work, the safety procedures, the operational procedures had to be in place for how we recruited drivers and who care drivers were. And all of that had to be, you know, it was not just, you know, th throw it up and see what happens. And so, so we really had to do it and prove that parents would do it. Um, and, and that's, you know, how we got our first investors. And we just kept raising, as we kept going, we got more and more people excited and, and, sh and could show, look, families are doing this and yep. families are doing this on recurring bases because we're really solving a huge problem for them. Uh, and so that's then what led to our seed round and, and subsequent investment. So you think there's an advantage of starting the company here in Los Angeles? Absolutely. I think LA is a collection of neighborhoods and a collection of suburbs, and so it's a great test market for us. It's also so geographically diverse and demographically diverse that it really helps us understand what Hop, Skip, Drive will look like in other markets. Yep. And if we can get your kids where they need to go safely and dependably in LA traffic with a 98% on-time arrival rate, we can do that anywhere. So fast forward from the, the founding days to today, what's Hop, Skip, Drive look like today? Yeah, Hop, Skip, Drive uh, in many ways looks exactly like I thought it would and in many ways looks completely different. Okay. Um, we're now in four markets. We're in Los Angeles, Orange County, the San Francisco Bay Area, and Denver. And you know we are a B2C business where we very much sell to families, but we are also, or sorry, B2C business where we yep. very much sell to families. Uh, but we are also a B2B business where we sell transportation services to schools and nonprofits and really anyone who needs to get kids around. And one of the things that I'm most proud of is that we are now also partnering with government and counties. Uh, we work with LA County Office of Education to drive foster kids to their mm -hmm. school of origin. Um, so we are driving foster youth all over the city who have been put into a placement and need to make sure that they're still able to go back to their school, which is kind of the one mm. piece of stability. Because foster kids sometimes move around. Exactly. Right? So you might move around quite a bit, which can mean new schools, which can mean, you know, transfer, credits don't transfer, uh, you know, sometimes. So you can keep them in the same school, keep that consistency at least at their school by exactly. leveraging you guys. Exactly. Oh, wow. um, so we're now doing that in LA and Ventura County. We're also doing that in Denver as well, which is part of the reason that we launched there. And so it's been a really, you know, the work that we do with schools and with nonprofits and with government is great because it's a huge growth opportunity and it's great for business, but it's also great because of the social impact of what okay. we're doing. And it's really, you know, truly doing good and doing well at the same time. And just something that I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of and that the whole team is really excited about and inspired by. You know, I think one thing that's really interesting is like a lot of times you see something, a uh, new technology business or a new marketplace business really disrupt uh, the industry. But in your case, you guys are like actually partnering. That's right. Yeah. So we, one of our larger investors is Student Transportation Inc., which is one of the, it's the third largest student bus company. And we don't think of it as disrupting as we do so much as complementing. Yep. Um, I think that in, you know, if you need to get 60 kids from point A to point B, 
the school bus is your best bet, hands down. Yep. Um, but oftentimes you see school buses that are incredibly underutilized, and that can be very expensive for a school. And so, when, you know, if you need to get 20 kids from point A to point B, we can be a great option for you. Or if you need to get, you know, 60 kids around, but they're not just going from one point to another, they're coming from multiple areas where a school bus route might mean that kids are on a bus for hours to pick up all of those kids, you know, kind of a hub and spoke model. Okay. Um, we can be a really, really great solution for that. Um, and any kind of special needs transportation or individualized, customized transportation, we can do really well. Um, and I think that we will continue to be uh, complementary and a little bit disruptive on the technology side and the safety side and things that we can offer um, in terms of tracking procedures and things like that um, that will transform the industry. So starting a company and doing what you've done is not an easy thing. Why, why did you do it? Yeah, it's, I think it's a great question. I never set out to be an entrepreneur, but really this was such a problem that we felt so deeply and that every family we talked to feels so deeply that we really had no choice but to start it. And I think every day, we see the impact that we have on families. We see how we are changing families' lives and empowering them to do things they couldn't do before. Both parents who are able to stay at work and get promotions and kids who are able to do things they couldn't do before. And that's what makes it worth it every single day and, and why we do what we do. Awesome. Well, thanks. Yeah, thanks thank for you. joining me.